All right, I'm back. We're on page 298, and uh, we're kind of like in the middle, I guess. We're going to talk about something called local linearity. So I don't really see this actually all that often anymore. It used to be more common in textbooks and things like that. But uh, the concept of local linearity, uh, if a function is differentiable at a point, it means it has a slope at that point. If a function has a slope at a certain point, then we can write the equation of a tangent line at that point. Local linearity just means that when you're really, really close to the point of tangency, the function will look a lot like the tangent line. That's like all that it's saying, but that's like kind of saying a lot. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just like zoom in a little bit and see what we can do. So uh, the main use of tangent lines is to approximate values of a function, although we've seen other things, right? We've also seen that if the tangent line is above the curve, the curve is concave down. If the tangent line is below the curve, then the curve is concave up. So it can tell us about concavity, Concavity is kind of how the curve is bending a little bit. Um, we're going to talk more about that, I think, in the next set of notes. So, like, don't worry if that's kind of like you feel like we didn't really talk about it formally yet, because we didn't. We just informally talked about it. So, let's see. This problem says, you zoom box repeatedly around the origin for each of the following functions. State what the result implies. Here we go. I'm going to share a calculator. And I'm going to add, I'm going to do a new problem doc for, and then problem. I'm going to add a graph page, and I'm going to graph the absolute value of x. So template, for me, it's over here. I think for a lot of you, it's going to be in like the second row, whatever. I don't, I don't know when you're even watching this. Uh, absolute value of x. OK, so I want to zoom around the center. I don't know. It says to use zoom box, but I'm just going to zoom in. You know, be a rebel. Break, break the rules. So we zoom in. We zoom in. We zoom in. We zoom, there's still a point. We zoom in. Okay, I don't know how many times I need to do this for you to be convinced. Look at the scale. Those x values are really small. No matter how much I zoom, if you get it, it's really satisfying when you get it right on the center and it just keeps going. Absolute value of x is always going to have a sharp turn. It's never going to flatten out. Why is it not going to flatten out? Because the derivative doesn't exist there. There is no tangent line. It never becomes linear-ish. It's always just going to look like a really sharp corner, and there's nothing you can do about that. This function is not differentiable, um, and so it never becomes locally linear. So let me go back, and I'm going to jot that down. So for this particular function, it's not differentiable. So woo. Um, let's use a different. Let's let's brighten it up a little bit. Let's use uh, this isn't the most exciting color, but not diff. So it never, never flattens out. It's always going to have a corner. Whoa. OK, so we already knew it wasn't differentiable, because in the last video, we spent a lot of time showing that it wasn't differential using the uh, limit definition of the derivative. Right? We had to do the limit as x approaches something from x approaches 0 from the left. And then also the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of f of x minus f of 0 over x minus 0. We showed that those two limits were not equal, which meant the limit overall didn't exist. And if the limit overall doesn't exist, and the limit is the definition of the derivative, the derivative doesn't exist. So we knew what was going to happen here. Let's take a look at sine of x. So sine of x is uh, it's going to be a different story. And it's kind of neat. So let's share the calculator again and see what we can do. So I'm going to add a new, uh, I'm just going to add a new problem, I guess. And then a graph page, I'm going to graph sine of x. OK, I'm going to do the same thing here, where I'm going to ignore the directions and just zoom in. So let's see. OK, do you see it happening? Do you see it getting flatter and flatter? Like even here, it kind of looks linear. I mean, something's going on that's a little weird at the edges. Um, let me add, I'm going to add in the tangent line. OK, so the function is sine. The derivative of sine, if you've played around, you will have found the derivative of sine is cosine. The cosine of 0 is 1, so the slope is 1. And it goes through the origin, 0, 0. So I'm just going to write the equation of the tangent line is just y equals x, so x. OK. So look at when you're really close to the origin, you can't even tell the difference between sine and its tangent line. If we get closer, let's do that. So we're going to zoom in, breaking all the rules. Try to get right on the origin. 
Look at, uh, there. I feel like you cannot tell that there are two things graphed there. This is what happens. If a function is differentiable to a point, you will be able to zoom in and eventually you can't tell the difference between the function and its tangent line. That's what it means for it to be locally linear, which is why you can take an X value and plug it into the tangent line. And it's going to give you a value that's very close to the value of the function. That's only true when you're close to the point of tangency where close doesn't really have a definition. Um, but this is what happens. Pick any differentiable function, pick any point on it, zoom in enough, eventually it looks linear and you can't tell the difference, right? If I took the scale away, you would think that I had just graphed a line. I did graph a line, but I also have graphed sine. And then you can like, you know, you can show off to all your friends and be like, oh, you think that's only a line? And you zoom out, I get it there. Oh, look at that. There's also a graph of sine in this picture. Who would have known? No one, because it's locally linear. If it's differential, it will always do that. So let's see, let's go back to the notes and let's write some of this down. So here, okay, so sine of x is differentiable, which means if we zoom enough, I think we have all zoomed enough in the last couple of weeks, but if we zoom enough, eventually, it looks like a line. And the line that it looks like is its tangent line. So we have found, or potentially we found, I have found, you should try to play around on your calculator, find the derivatives of some of the trig functions, just like see, see what you can make of those. There, some of them are interesting. Sine and cosine, very straightforward. Tangent, like kind of, and then they kind of get weird from there. Um, so looks like a line uh, f prime we know is cosine of x. So f prime of 0 is 1. f of 0 is 0 because it's sine. So the tangent line is going to be y minus 0 equals 1, and then x minus 0, which I'm going to break my own rule here, and I'm going to write this in. Uh, I'm going to expand this because, like, you know, why not? Y equals X. All right. And that's it. All right. Uh, I'm going to do the next problem just because it's here um, and we're here and why not? So show that F of X equals X to the one third is not differentiable. All right. So I'm going to, so what's the domain of F of X? So domain of F of X is all reals. There's no number that you can't put in there because it's a cube root. If it was square root, it'd be greater than or equal to zero. If it was any even root, it'd be greater than or equal to zero. Um, if it was any other odd root, it would be all reals. So now let's find the derivative. So f prime of x. So if f of x is x to the one third, f prime is gonna be one third x to the negative two thirds, which you can look at right away and say like zero doesn't work. If you can't do that, rewrite it as 3x to the two, 1 over 3x to the 2 thirds. OK, what's the domain of this? Well, you're still taking a cube root. And in fact, you're squaring it at the end, um, which isn't really relevant to this. But you're still taking a cube root. So the domain is going to be all reals, but you can't divide by 0. So x is not 0. OK, so why is the function not differentiable? It's not differentiable because the domain of f is all reals. The domain of the derivative is all reals except 0. There's a value in the domain at which the derivative doesn't exist. That's by definition not differentiable. So let's say since f of 0 exists, but f prime of 0 does not ah does not exist f of x is not differentiable at x equals zero so we proved it okay use its lack of differentiability to conclude something else about the graph of f of x at x equals zero sketch the graph and its tangent line at x equals zero okay so 
the derivative doesn't exist at zero, but I'm saying to sketch the tangent line at x equals zero, like what does that mean? Well, this is a little different from the absolute value of x, right? The absolute value of x is not differentiable at x equals zero because the slope from the left is negative one, the slope from the right is positive one. They both exist, they're finite, but they're not the same. So the limit overall doesn't exist, right? That's why absolute value of x is not differentiable. This is different. This doesn't exist because you're not allowed to divide by zero. What happens to the slope as x approaches zero? That's a different question. So as x approaches zero, so I'm gonna do it here, I guess. Let's see, Let's swap up the color again. I had like a lot of videos where I was just using black. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to change that up. So the limit as x approaches zero of f prime of x is, so as x approaches zero, you get a very tiny number. You're gonna square that very tiny number um, and then you're gonna take the cube root of it, whatever, it's very tiny, um, but it's positive because you squared it. So we have one divided by a very tiny positive number, that's gonna go to infinity. And that's actually from the left and the right. What has a slope that's basically infinite? Well, the thing that has a slope that's basically infinite, and I understand this is like a lot of like really heady thinking type things here, but bear with me. Uh, I'm gonna say, or what has a slope that's essentially like one over zero? Like what, what, has, what has no slope? What has no slope is a vertical line. X equals zero is the tangent line. This is weird, it's a vertical tangent line. Vertical tangent lines are useless because you can't plug anything into them because they're just X equals a constant. But if we sketch it, so let's do that. So I'm gonna sketch f of x. So f of x is the cube root of x. That looks like this and this kind of. And its tangent line looks like, uh, what color can I use here that will like show up? Its tangent line is vertical. It goes vertical for one instant, right? And if you look at the graph, put some tangent lines on here, right? Tangent line is below the curve. Graph is concave up. Tangent line is above the curve. The curve is concave down. That's what we call a point of inflection. That's where it changes, the graph of f of x changes concavity at this point. So there is a tangent line, it's just vertical. Vertical tangent lines are useless. Uh, it turns out that at this particular point, the curve itself changes from concave up to concave down. That's a point of inflection. We're gonna talk about those a whole lot more, but uh, I'm gonna stop this here. I feel like when we meet, you will definitely have questions about this and I will try to answer them for you. Um, and I will uh, see you then. So uh, I'll be back in the next video to do more. Uh, hope these are kind of helpful.